everyone. Uh, this is our first video, our first lesson transitioning into displaying quantitative data. We're starting out with something that you guys are already familiar with and hopefully feel good about. So I'm going to minimize myself so that I can go to our packet and we will get going. So this should be packet six. And from here on out, I think that I'm going to number these for us just to help with organization. Um, five was two-way tables and five was the uh, last thing that we talked about when it came to categorical variables. So if we take a look back at where we started, we talked about types of data. We talked about how there's two types of data. There's categorical, which is described with words, and there's quantitative, which is described with numbers. We have now done all of the things that you see on this left-hand side. So looking at these graphs and tables, you should feel very comfortable with what these are. So bar graph, notice bars aren't touching, pie chart, two-way table, segmented bar graph, um, like I said, you should feel pretty good about all of those ideas. And we are now transitioning to the other um, type of data that we can have, which is quantitative. So we are going to be discussing dot plots in this video, and then histograms, and finally stem and leaf plots. It'll be a little while before we get to these box and whiskers down here. So we just finished categorical. We are now transitioning to quantitative. Once we are done with quantitative, we are done with unit one and you will take your first exam. Okay, so that all being said, we're gonna start with dot plots and we've already made and looked at several dot plots. So Barry Bonds set the major league record for hitting 73 home runs in a single season in 2001 on October 7, 2007, Bonds hit his 756th career home run. That broke Hank Aaron's long-standing record of 755. By the end of the 2000 season, when Bonds retired, he had increased the total to 762. Here are the data on the number of home runs that Bonds hit in each of his 21 complete seasons. Use this data to make a dot plot and a histogram. So on this page, we're just focusing on dot plot. Um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So what this 16 here represents is it, it is one season where Bonds had 16 home runs. And then this one is one season where he had 25 home runs. So in order to make our dot plot, and the reason why we start with a dot plot is because dot plots are the most straightforward, the easiest graphs to make. It is very simple and quick, and you can do it if you have a large data set, and you can do it if you have a small data set. So um, dot plots are a really good plot for a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest is that it's quick and easy, and you can still see the shape of the data and characteristics of the data, and that's something that we're really interested in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is identify the minimum value in my data set and the maximum value in my data set because that's going to help me decide how I should scale my axis. So if I look through this table, it's looking like 16 is my minimum and 73 is my maximum which is kind of unfortunate because that is, or those are a lot of values that we have to cover on our um, X axis to make this dot plot. So I'm going to draw a line about this far down. And unfortunately he does need to be about that long because we have to go from 16 to 73. I think I'm gonna start over here at zero. You could start at 10 or 15 if you wanted to, but I guess I'm kind of feeling like go big or go home, so I'll just start at zero. And then I think I'm going to go by fives. Now, you don't want to put your ticks too close together because once we start laying dots down, you need to remember that in between each tick, you're going to need to fit in 
that many tick marks because this is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So do not make these tick marks too close together or else you're not going to be able to lay down all the um, uh, dots that we may need to put in. So I'm going to finish my scale and remember I'm going to try to get all the way up to 75. So I'm just going to continue on with my tick marks. I'm doing my best to keep them evenly spaced. I'm just going all the way till the end of the line that I drew. I'm going to fill in the numbers and hope that I got to 75. Oh good, I did. I could get all the way to 80 if I really wanted to. So if you still need more time to do yours, then just pause the video and unpause when you're ready to move on with me. So step number one is done. I checked my minimum and my maximum value so that I could figure out how I needed to scale the one axis that I have for a dot plot. I have filled in my numbers, which is very important. And the other thing that is also very important is that we label our graph. We label what this axis is. So this axis is the number of home runs. Number of home runs. number of home runs. You could go even further to say four Barry Bonds or Barry Bonds 21 seasons. In the very least you need number of home runs. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to start placing these dots on my, um, on my axis. So my first one is 16. So I'm just going to put one little tick mark next to 15 and lay down my first dot. And then I'm going to mark that box so that I know that I did it. I'm only doing a little mark this time because we need to use this data set one more time. So I want to be able to cross it out if I need to. Next one is 25. Remember, we're trying to keep these at the same level horizontally. We have one at 24, so I'm just going to put a dot right next to that one at 25. 19, so I'm putting one right to the left of 20. 33, so I'm going to have to draw some tick marks for this guy. So I'm going to go 31, 32, 33, 25, and so on. I'm going to go through all of these values until I have them all placed. So that's the first seven. So from here, I'm going to work silently so that my talking isn't bothering you. You don't have to pause because I'm going to be hopefully working as this at the same time that you're working. So I'm now on 46.
Okay, so I just finished mine. If you're not done yet, then pause and unpause when you have all of your dots on your dot plot. So um, typically I'll go through now and verify that I have 21 dots uh, on my graph. Twenty twenty one. So I do, I just verify that I have all of my data points. And now that we have our dot plot, what we would typically do is look at the shape. And on this one, we don't have a very interesting shape. And part of the reason is because um, the data points are so spread out. But the other part of that is that we don't have a lot of um, a lot of points. We don't have a lot of data points. We only have 21. So for the amount that this data set is spread out, uh, I don't think that we have enough data points to give us a really good shape to look at. Um, you'll see in histograms and in stem and leaf, you'll get a better idea of what I mean by shape. So the shape, there's nothing special here. So then the next thing that sometimes we look at is how spread out our data is. And by sometimes I mean, we always look at that. So we look at shape. I can't, there's nothing interesting about this shape. We look at spread. This data set I would say is very spread out. We're going all the way from 16 to 73. So I personally would say that this data set has a very big spread then we look at any unusual points. So just looking at all these data points on our dot plot, do you see any that you would um, call unusual or identify as unusual? So hopefully you're noticing this guy right here. This guy is what's making it so that our spread is so large. If we just, uh, if we ignored that, we would have been able to just go from 15 to 50, which would have been a little bit easier, but because of this one season where he had an extraordinary amount of home runs, we got to drag it all the way out to 73. When you have a very unusual point, that's called an outlier. When you have a point that is far away from the rest of the data, it's called an outlier. So either you're recognizing it as something very unusual or you're recognizing it as being um, far away from the rest of the data. And then the other thing that we typically talk, talk about is center, but that takes a little bit longer to go through why we do that and how we do that. So we're gonna skip that for now. So this is our dot plot. We have one axis. We scale it, we label it, and then we just simply put our data values, our observations down as a dot on the graph. Then we usually look at shape, nothing interesting, spread, this is very spread out, anything unusual, yep, this guy here. And then center, like I said, we'll do that at a different time. Okay, that's all there is for dot plots.